There's a lot of things going on this week. Do you have prepared for today, Trey? There are a lot of things going on this week. Uh, welcome, everybody, to World on the Street, powered by Lean Solutions Group, coming to you today from the Big Apple. I am here in New York, even though this is a virtual background. I did actually take this picture, and it's only about half a mile from where I'm staying right now. But it's stinking hot and humid, so I'm not doing this outdoors. I'm definitely doing it indoors, but wanted to give you the feel for uh, for the background. So how's everybody doing today? What's going on? Let's go around the room. Greg Roberts, what's up, man? How's Chicago? Uh, humid, not quite as hot, but still nice. <laughs> Got to, yeah, get that get that heat down there. I'm going to be in Chicago in about three weeks. I don't want to deal with that uh, with the heat, so <laughs> do what you can. Work on that. Colin, oh, not what's up, buddy? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Welcome. I'm happy to be back to this. Uh, it's are you in a new studio? Uh, I've a... been building it out. I finally got to build it. I out like it. Studio. You got the so soundproof in there. Mm-hmm. Look at this. Oh, yeah. All the the sound stuff. quality is tremendously better. Keep it up. <laughs> Hi, was that a Freight Waves logo I saw somewhere in the background? No, that's the Freight Plus, who I work for. I create a little oh, Freight Plus studio. I didn't see the oh, point. My internet's very unstable right now. Well, yeah, it's raining here in Boston. You guys are lucky. I would take the humidity. We're getting nothing but rain again. Yeah, rain. well, we're getting a little bit of rain here in New York. Uh, I'll be in Boston next week, though. Kyle, we should get together, man. We haven't. Uh, I've never met you in person, and we need to yeah. make that happen. So, oh, for sure, we're to, right uh, outside of Boston. You should stop by, check out the yeah, place. Yeah, for sure, we'll be there for a week. We can make that happen. I for agree. sure. Juan, what's up, buddy? Tell me about Colombia, man. How are you? I can't wait to get down there in two months. Well, not a lot going on. <laughs> Where, where are you today? Same old, same old. This is a new... uh, I'm in the office. I'm You're in the, the office. office. Yeah, I'm in the nice. office. Um, what is going on here? Wall, Not much. Same old, same old. Everything's opened up? Which wall? Yeah, everything's opened all up good. again. People are going to parties. It's, it's all normal. People forgot about COVID. They're still vaccinated very slowly. <laughs> um, you know, Everybody same old, same it. old. It's now gone. we have that Delta Plus thing going around, so they're not now they're trying to terrorize us with the on the news with that one. Uh, yeah, we can say more, say more. Yeah, I can believe that. My mom. So this is interesting, and I don't think my mom's going to watch this, so I can say this. But my mom <laughs> called me last night, and um, you know, my wife has gotten the vaccine, but I haven't gotten it yet. And she's like, "Why haven't you gotten vaccinated?" And I said, "So listen, I, you know, I'm very healthy. I have a great immune system. Not too comfortable about what's in it yet. It's just I'm just not ready to take it yet, right? Like it's, it's kind of my choice." My mom literally ended the call crying. I mean, like she, I don't know what she watched, but something just put so much fear in her about like losing me. And I was like, mom, you could lose me tomorrow in a car accident. Like this could happen anytime, right? I'm doing the best I can to like prolong my life. That's in my best interest. And, uh, (laughs) you know, I'm just, I'm not at that place where I want to take that. But she literally was crying. I was like, wow. You know, I mean, there must, there's just gotta be some serious talk about that Delta variant and just, just fear. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm being stupid, but I don't know. It's pretty well. I mean, you also told her that you were possibly going to die in a car accident. I'm sure no mother wants to hear like, hey, I could go at any time now. <laughs> well, that's probably, I mean, I probably shouldn't have gone that route, but the, I mean, yeah. like, <laughs> you know, walking on New York City, I mean, who knows what's going to happen, you know, but um, I don't know. It was just, it was kind of one of those things where I was like, mom, listen, I, I'm not trying to die. I'm not trying to in my time any sooner than, than normal or possible. So, uh, you know, it's all, it's all good. But anyways, all right. So let's keep going around the room. Tyler Gilpin, what's up, buddy? Are you still muted? I can't hear you. Can you guys hear him? No audio. Moving on. We'll come back to you in a minute. John, what's up, man? How are you? <laughs> John, can you hear me? Rot roll. No, he, he's muted. He's muted as well. He's muted. Okay. Yeah. All right, keep we're gonna move on. Hey, Raquel, I think what's I'm up, back. Man? There you are. There's John. John, what's up, man? How are you? That was Tyler. Oh, that was Tyler. There you are. Hey, what's up? Not uh, back. Yeah, yeah. Doing good. I'm here in here in Arlington, Texas. Uh, it's it's muggy as hell down here right now. We had <laughs> had some rain last night. I went out this morning for a five mile run and came in like a, like a soaking wet from head to toe. <laughs> five mile doing run, good. man. You're making us all feel bad. Five mile run. Good night. I'm so lazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Impressive. Man, I, I, al- I alternate running and biking every day. So. Hell, good I'm, for you. I'm 65. I want to be around for a while. <laughs> good for you. That's awesome. We're going to be in your neck of the woods in September for the McLeod Conference there in, uh, at, uh, okay. at the Gaylord. Yeah, so looking forward to getting back down there in September. Hopefully it's, it's not nice too place. hot then. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. So, Tyler, yeah, back to you, man. Phoenix is good? I'm off in. Everybody thinks August, still, so. August, August is our worst, right, and so. then you think August is done. Yeah, well, hopefully it's good by September. So, Tyler, again, September's where are you at? usually pretty 
I'm out here in Sioux Falls getting ready to head north. Oh, uh, that's this right. Afternoon. You're still going up to uh, the Canada border, do some walleye fishing. So, Oh, nice. What do you try to catch up there? Uh, it's going to be walleye and pike for the most part. And you're catching it to eat or you're catching it to release it? What do you, what do you guys do? Uh, walleye to eat, pike's not so favorable. Not too good. <clears throat> How much are you trying to catch? You catch like for a couple months or is it just a, you know, no, for, it'll be just a little yeah, bit. for the weekend, maybe a couple extra days. Okay. Cause my, my in-laws do fishing trips where they get like, you know, 50 or 60 fish and then they freeze them. And then we have a big fish fry later on a couple times throughout the, the year. So I didn't sure. know how, how big you guys are going on that, but that'll be fun. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. It'll be a good time. Raquel, what's up girlfriend? How are you? Hey everyone. Happy Friday. Long weekend. I'm so excited. Long weekend, big plans. I yeah, know. it's good. You guys are going camping. Anyway, in the way, we camper, have a long right? weekend here too. I am. I'm going up to the Finger Lakes of New York here. We leave Monday because I like to do things backwards of everyone else. I figured everyone else will be coming home. So we're going to go and maybe uh-huh. it'll be a little bit less hectic. But that's the way to do it for sure. Because getting getting an RV spot around a holiday weekend is brutal. So it's, yeah. uh, that's the wise way to do it for sure. And you're going up to Finger Lakes, which Finger Lakes. I didn't I didn't know this existed. Uh, <laughs> you guys have heard this, but I looked it up. It's just about 10 lakes that look like fingers. Like it's on a map. It's kind of eerie. It looks kind of weird. They're just these yeah. skinny little lakes and <laughs> it's just kind of odd. So uh, that should be pretty fun. Well, I hope you have a good time doing that. That'll be good. I'll be hiking. My husband will be fishing. It'll be great. <laughs> nice. Everybody's, everybody's getting what they want. That'll be great. Yep. That's awesome. We'll have fun with that. Diana, what's up, girl? How are you? No camera. No camera, Diana. Hey, by the way, I watched a little bit last week and you had your camera on and I was somewhat ticked off about that. All right. <laughs> gonna tell you that right now like what is i'm the, sorry what is the i'm sorry trey i'm sorry no, I'm like chris pretty- jolly's chris jolly's hosting oh okay and pretty off get ready <laughs> there you know. are there you are i knew i could get you on there <laughs> yeah i'm making jewelry i'm i'm laughing right now because some chick um like text me from a random number and she was like hi is this i don't know some fucking guy's name and I was like, Roger, his name, is this Roger? And I'm like, no, this isn't Roger. I'm sorry. This is the wrong number. And I feel bad for her. Cause I'm like, man, this dude like gave her a wrong number and she doesn't believe me. And I was like, no, really? I am a chick. I feel bad. If you want to be for coffee <laughs> so we could like talk shit about Roger, I'm down with that. Then, now she's trying to fucking send me nudes. And I'm like, I'm not Roger. <laughs> Stop. No. oh goodness yeah so, so diana i think i know what you're gonna be doing over the weekend there might be putting a few down yeah there might be some yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't know. there there's time bomb what's up aaron how are you <laughs> good how are you awesome we uh we enjoyed our time in pennsylvania thanks for some of the advice and, and dc as well some of the tips what are you uh what are you up to this weekend what do you got going on um baseball <laughs> all baseball yeah tournaments yep. yeah yeah we just baseball we, and more baseball we don't we don't uh, miss out on that we didn't really you know our kids aren't team sports players so we don't have to do that so much but uh, uh i remember as a kid going to those and playing four or five games in a weekend and trying to you know get it all in so we'll have fun with that enjoy that will be that will be good all right well everybody we've had some big things happen uh this week in the news some good some bad We'll start off with this. I don't know if you guys heard or not, but Convoy and Flexport had a big announcement of a little merger that they're doing there um, to bring some technology and some other uh, aspects to the marketplace. I- I'm wondering, I-, I just keep seeing this Trucker Tools recently had uh, a private equity acquisition. So, you know, they they uh, they got uh, funded and uh, have some money to play with now. I'm just wondering, like, wh- what else is next? I mean, what else is out there? Who are we going to hear from? I mean, is Amazon going to partner with somebody in logistics? Like, what? What's going to happen out there? What are you guys hearing? What's what do you guys think? Well, was Anybody? was the Flexport Convoy a merger or was it just a strategic partnership? Uh, it's a good question. Let's look it up. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was, but I remember seeing it and thinking that they they were pretty much going to be walking side by side in Didn't many ways. Amazon buy into Coyote. I don't know about that. Was it Amazon? I haven't heard that. Was it or was it UPS that bought Coyote? UPS or Convoy? I think it was Convoy that that was you know has some some majority share by uh, by Amazon. Then it's one of those two. Those, those two ring a bell. All right. Well, let's look this up and we'll just check the report 
Flex Port Convoy Partnership. So maybe it's more of a partnership than an acquisition, but still, it's uh, it's pretty significant to see some big players coming together uh, to do that. Coyote. Yeah, UPS is Coyote. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, so I mean, you know, it's it's interesting to see some of these things happening where some of the big boys are really starting to you know come together and uh, do a little bit of consolidation, if not you know from a merger position, but certainly from a partnership position from an integration standpoint. So um pretty interesting on that i just you know i just wonder what's the next big bomb that we're going to see um you know come through here uh and and check that out i'm trying to pull up this in the morning report real quick. yeah what do you got i don't know if you guys saw the news this morning uh the senate passed the ruling where they raised the liability limit for tr- uh, cdl uh trucking companies to two million dollars that actually happened this morning oh is it, when does it go into effect though and will it go into effect i'm not sh- I'm not sure. I was scrolling through the news real quick and Freightways popped that news this morning. I was like, well, here we go. <laughs> well, that's always the question. You know, much they, more interesting. Well, they pass something like that, but then they give, you know, three years before it goes into effect. And then like two months before it goes into effect, they push it back. So it's like what typically happens on that kind of thing. So I'd be curious to know about that. I mean, it's only going to make it harder to see for people what to it get does. in, which, you know, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, you know, making the standards a little mm-hmm. bit higher. But at the same time, when you don't have enough capacity, that makes it pretty challenging. So. That's pretty crazy. Uh, Convoy is going to be fully integrated into Flexport's operational dashboard. Okay, so I guess there's no money changing hands, but certainly there's uh, there's a you know an investment in in uh, technology to to streamline some processes in there. So um, yeah, I have a feeling we're going to see more of those. You know, we haven't heard much from companies like Truck Stop lately. They did a lot of M and A for a while there. They were acquiring a lot of companies and haven't heard from them in a couple months um, on what they're doing. So. Well, see I was gonna say, yeah, they got RMIS not too long ago. Right, right. They had that one, which is interesting because they they already had you know Safer Watch um, in some ways, and my carrier packets was connected in there as well. So that was kind of an interesting acquisition. But I think it was more for the insurance uh, certificates. I would imagine, I, w- I would guess, potentially, maybe the ease of ease of use, something like that. But. Um, but pretty interesting. So we'll, we'll have to kind of see what happens with that. So, um, so that's happening. Uh, we got a lot of, a lot of, it's going on the news in that regard. We also have, um, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but Craig uh, Fuller was, uh, was on, um, I think he was on Bloomberg or one of those networks yep. on Bloomberg. And he was talking about the, you know, what he's seeing, you know, with capacity and freight, um, you know, and his prediction is, you know, things are going to change for, um, you know, another year uh, in terms of, you know, the freight demand and the capacity issues that we're seeing and, uh, I mean, the supply chain is just, just really a mess right now. Um, it's just it's, it's just crazy kind of the situation we find ourselves in. Um, so we're going to launch our first poll here. We're going to talk just briefly about capacity and the freight imbalance that's going on. I'm going to give uh, panelists the opportunity to vote. We got Nick Rumor coming in and get him in here real quick from Scotland. See what's going on across the pond. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, take that. Let's see what music we can play today, too. What do I got today? What do I got? What do you guys want to listen to? Tyler, what's your what's your groove, man? What do you listen to? Oh man, you asked. I'm all over the map. It goes all the way from old school country to Tupac. So, old school country to Tupac. I like it. How about how about we go back to our our classic '90s country? How about that? Is that all right? Yeah, let's shuffle and see what we did. Shania. No Shania today. No Shania. We're going to little Alan Jackson. <laughs> you know. Something, something very curious with the whole uh, tender, like the entire industry, how it gets, you know, how it tightens up and it loosens out, you know, here and there. I don't know if you guys remember, like April post 2018. I think it was no, it was till 2018, where there was like that massive drop on freight volumes that it just got crazy. I don't know if you guys remember that, like March, April 2018. I think it was. I remember a lot of small brokerages went on, like went under the way with that. And that was pre-COVID. Um, and I remember that December and the previous summer uh, summer break were probably the busiest I've ever been through. Like we had the, that summer was incredibly busy. We, December came in, it was triple. And then April came in and it was almost like a shutdown. Like, like everybody just 
close to water tab on, on brokers. I think something like that should be like, wouldn't be weird to see if it happens somewhere around next uh, 2022 early, you know, early the first two quarters. Well, the problem though is that, that there, there's just so much money out there and the government keeps giving people money and people are just buying stuff. They just keep buying stuff, you know? And so the demand for, you know, raw materials, the demand for finished products, all that stuff is still just high. I mean, you have to shut off the tap to the, 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 the people, you know, and then what's going to happen is they're going to have to go get a job. And then, you know, there's going to be a delay in demand. They're not going to spend as much money if they don't have it and have to go work, you know? I mean, if they don't have to work and they've got money, they're just sitting around all day. They're just buying stuff, you know? I think we're seeing a lot of that. And until that changes, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think it's going to change, you know, on the transportation side of things. So is it true they're going to print more checks? I heard that. In fact, my wife brought it up and she doesn't even pay attention to the news. You know, she actually brought up that, hey, are they going to send us more money? You know, and I haven't really kept up with that. I haven't really paid much attention, but I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I I really think that what they're doing is they're manufacturing wage increases. That's what I think is happening. You know, they're giving money out to people who aren't working because then they don't have any incentive to go to work for $12 an hour. They can wait till it's 16, 17, 18, $20 an hour, you know, until the companies, you know, increase the wages. So I feel like that's what's happening is that they are forcing wage increase by giving people money and keeping them off the, the labor labor market. I mean, I saw I saw today that eight, we got eight hundred fifty thousand new jobs in June in the U.S., but our mm-hmm. unemployment rate went up. Well, if you keep paying people to be at home, why would they go get a job? I mean, I to just, make two dollars more an hour. Yeah, you know, it's I not. Mean, it's not. I don't know. It's not worth it. It's just not right though either because a lot of the small businesses around us are really struggling because yeah. as a small business, you really can't get as much funding or, or assistance. And then how do you afford to pay your employees more than what you're able to bring in? You know, right. um, a lot of people, like I just went to a re- restaurant locally and they started serving on paper plates. They were fancy paper plates, but on paper plates. And you're like, why? They said, we can't get a dishwasher. I'm like, are you're kidding. You can't find you, to go that's back. That's when you say, neither can I. We use paper plates at home. This is cool. <laughs> 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 my dishwashers don't work at all we use paper all the time like shocked <laughs> that's crazy and I, you see help wanted signs everywhere i mean everywhere you go you see help wanted sign but there's just no incentive for people in those positions to go work i mean i just really believe like they're manufacturing wage inflation i think that's what they're doing but is it just incentive to work but at the same time i mean there's apps there's ways to make money without doing backbreaking work like a dishwasher like is that another trend yeah, that's hard really work thinking about right now because like, it's hard work like who yeah, like do kids want to do that the kids know the value of what they're worth nowadays they know how they create their own channel they know how to monetize all that stuff there's these are positions that i wonder if they're, they're going away like not even just the fact that like you're not getting paid for it yeah. Yeah. They're going to make you wash your own dishes now. Or actually what they're going to do Bring is gonna, paper you, just, you just, you just take your dishes, you put them in this, you know, thing and it just goes through and wash them automatically. And there's somebody's going to build a machine that literally goes beginning to end on washing dishes and making <laughs> salads at Applebee's. Oh, dishwasher, that's right. <laughs> no, no, like go to that go to the restaurant. Bell, go like a, a commercial one that does everything from start to finish. I'm shut up. You guys shut up. Chris Jolly, what's up, buddy? How are you, man? Uh, I don't need to say anything, man. Everybody's giving you shit right now. I'm good. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> hey, well, while I've got you, man, uh, thank you for covering last week. I appreciate you jumping into the hot seat and uh, and leading uh, the call last week. So really appreciate yeah, that, n- man. Yeah, no worries. I'm glad it's recorded, and now there's proof that you're actually you know cordial towards me. <laughs> well, I, I had to give Diana a lot of crap today because she had her camera on last week for you, but won't turn it on for me. That's 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 where we're at. I so, thought I call know. respect, Trey. I call that <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. A lot of truth to that. So, all right, let's go ahead and go over this poll real quick, and then we're going to jump on to some new topics. So, um, talking about just a couple of questions here around capacity and freight imbalance. Question number one: When will freight volumes come down? Uh, most of you think it's going to be in 2022. Nobody put 2021, so I think we're in agreement on that. Half of you uh, put first half of 2022, and the other half after june 30th of 2022 i mean it's you know it's, it's funny when this whole thing started back you know in april may of, of 2020 um i remember thinking there's no way that, that we're going to be in this, this situation uh this time next year and and now we're past that and now we're talking about another year past that i mean it's it's really crazy to think about how this is just pro like just continuing you know um even going back to normal it's just continuing uh to be an issue 
Um, it's crazy. But I think, you know, I think it goes back to what we just talked about. People are sitting at home with money. And so they're just buying stuff, you know? And so, uh, you know, the demand just continues to stay high. Question two, how many new carrier MCs will be there in the next six months? You know, this is, I, I thought of this question, but I didn't really know what the norm was. You might know kind of like on a, on a month by month or quarterly basis, how many new carrier MCs typically come in? Anybody, anybody know that? No idea. <laughs> like I would be, I'd be curious to know what that normally is and how it's going to, you know, how it's impacted because you got to think that there's people that are like, I really need to get into the carrier game to buy a truck because it's crazy right now. I know that's maybe not the wisest thing, but there are, pe- there are people that are going to think that they did that back in 2018. I don't know you guys remember that, of course, you know, we had the, the flood of trucks in 2018. And then of course, uh, you know, a year later, we had way too many trucks on the market and rates went way down. Um, so I, you got to think people are going to do that, but I just don't know what number it is, but it uh, looks like it's kind of spread out a little bit. None of us, none of us knows anything on this question. I think uh, we'll just kind of tag that, but most of you somewhere between 500 and 2,500 new carrier MCs in the next six months. So that would be interesting if somebody wants to track that let me know what you find out on that. Um, question three, what will happen to freight rates the rest of this year? So five of you still think that we have not hit the peak. They're still going up. And four of you think they're going to stay where there are. Nobody thinks they're going to go down. I mean, what's the peak here? You know, I mean, for those of you that are in the trenches every day, Raquel, Greg, you know, what, what, what does that look like? Tyler, I mean, Aaron, what, what's the peak? Juan, what do, what do you guys think? October, November. You think so? Traditional. After produce season's mm-hmm. done, before yeah. the Christmas rush? Well, that is, I mean, that is the Christmas rush, right? So that's going right. to be, you know, that, that's going to be the peak of it, I think. And then <laughs> based on where we're at, though, usually after produce, you get a little bit of a dip, Right. And, and the, the rates come down a little bit and then they go back up in the in Q4. This year, I, I just think with the way everything is, instead of a dip, we're going to celebrate the fact that it's staying flat for a few, <laughs> for a little bit. And then at that point, it's going to just skyrocket again. I mean, people are going to be paying through the nose for, for what they need. Yeah. I mean, look, look what's going on in the uh, container market right now. I mean, th- those rates have gone through the roof yeah. and they're continuing to go up. <laughs> Yeah, I saw something like fifty. I can't remember what it was. It was like forty thousand dollars. I saw for like ocean. Cont- it's something crazy. I, I can't remember what it was, but it was. It caught my attention. Yeah, there's there's fifteen twenty thousand dollar rates out there for containers right now. It's insane. Mm. I think yeah. the one that, that we I saw one that just went out for fifteen thousand for a four, forty foot one. Mm-hmm. Like, no, no, yeah. no. I mean, I forget what they're at, but I think it's the crazy. UB publish is, um, really if you don't have a, a, an allocation, the UP, I think, is currently at a $3,000 per load surcharge. It might be $1,500, yeah. but I mean, it's it at one point was at three hundred or $3,000. And it's like, how do you even, I, I mean, basically they're saying no mas. Right. Right. I, just love how, I just love how big of a racket that all is. And it's just, it's not, they're not even trying to hide it at this point. How big of a it's ridiculous to me. My worst scenario was with Schneider once they delivered, they chose to deliver a load early and charged me a thousand dollars for them delivering it early. <laughs> like that's how big of a racket those fucking guys are. Like it's insane. Wow. It's, it's hopeful just, thinking maybe the prices would uh, start to come down a little bit because I know after 4th of July, we usually see a tiny slight dip. Um, but after talking with many of my carriers, I'm just hearing that there's still a plethora of loads out there. They're, you know, they're still getting calls. They're booked up for the rest of the next week already. Um, so I think it's going to stay the same until, you know, until we hit in, you know, a slower time in, in November or December. Did FedEx uh, publish the list of the customers they're not working with anymore? <laughs> if you're a broker, I'd be calling every one of those shippers right now. <laughs> right. They took it back, though. Did you see that? They rescinded oh. that. Oh, did they? Yeah. yeah. They, they went they back did. on their word. Yeah. They got pressure Cheered. and they went back and said, okay, we won't, we won't turn you off. <laughs> yeah. Mm. We'll just delay yeah. you for three weeks, but we're not That's shutting right. you off. No, no. Mm. You got to give us your freight. Exactly. She's going to sit over here for a while. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. We'll charge you attention on that <laughs> storage fees. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. A little, little, little pressure, but yeah, I wish they would publish that list. That would be very fascinating. How many calls those, those uh, customers would get. They'd be bombarded, but um, pretty wild. So, all right, well, transitioning to some other news. Um, we're going to transition over to sports a little bit. Big case this week in which um, college athletes 
are now able to cash in on their name, image, and likeness. And uh, we had some interesting things happen around that. We had uh, obviously the people who got busted back in the day. Think about the Fab Five in Michigan, who they took away their banners and their wins uh, because they, t- they collected a little bit of money for jerseys and, and other things that they sold uh, back then. Um, it's going to be really fascinating to see if they do any retroactive work on, on this Bush or if it's only going for Heisman. That's yeah, it. Reggie Bush. <laughs> Reggie Bush back is Heisman. You know, Johnny Manziel with his autograph, you know, money that he got. I mean, it's his autograph, you know, like what, you know, it's not even the college. It has nothing to do with the college. It's his autograph alone. Couldn't do anything on that. So going to be pretty interesting. But we're going to do our second poll today about uh, nil, which no longer stands for nothing. It now stands for cash money. So go ahead and take that poll. And while you are, we're going to listen to a little bit of uh, uh, what do we got here? No, we're not listening to that. Definitely not listening to that. Okay, a little Sawyer Brown. Tyler, you probably like Sawyer Brown. Yeah. We're going to stick with that. How come, you, how come you just don't have an all Frank Sinatra playlist today? You're in New York, man. I should. Man, you're so right. See, this is why I I'm know. Too, like, you should be doing this. I should be Come on, yeah. Boomer. No don't, Jay-Z. Don't, no don't feed my ego anymore. Sinatra is what you guys want? <laughs> Dude, you I love Jay-Z, Frank. no good New York rap? We, there should be, like, just a New York playlist. That's what it should there be. Is. Where is it? There is. Okay. There has to be. There's got to be. If nobody's ever done this. All right, let's see what we got here. Mm, 100 greatest New York, yeah, hip hop songs. Well, I, my kids are back here. These are explicit. I can't play these. If you want New York, put play some Ramones or something. Play some what? Beats Ramones. Ramones. The Ramones. <laughs> the Ramones. How about a, uh, that's true. That's kind of some good options. All right. Well, we're just going to stick with sort of down for right now. And then we'll, hey, we'll I got to jump. Here. I just wanted to jump in and say hi. I hope you guys all have a happy 4th of July. Thanks for gracing us with your presence, Chris. You're Jolly. welcome, Trey. Have a good one, Chris. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Happy 4th, buddy. See you. Sure. Hey, did you guys see that um, Rhonda and I had a wonderful conversation yesterday? And I did um, not see that on LinkedIn. Check out her page. She posted a little clip about it, um, just kind of talking about stress in the workplace, mental health. Oh, did you guys do like a video, like a little little podcast recording? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it was really fun. So we're, hey, that's I'm- the content I'm here for. Thank you for telling me <laughs> about that. I appreciate that. Find that link and throw it into the chat box so we can okay. just jump right in. That'd be great. <clears throat> All right, finish this up. We're almost we're almost good here, and then we'll talk about this. I think this is fascinating. You know what this is going to do to college sports. Uh, on the one hand, I love it for the players, um, but we'll see what happens, you know, for – for because, uh, I mean, I was a college athlete. You know, I was a walk-on. So even worse than a scholarship athlete, I was paying to play, which is pretty terrible. <laughs> um, but, you know, to think about, you know, these guys that they the, – the restrictions they put on them where they can't even get a job outside of outside of, of that, um, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's good for them, but we'll see what happens to college sports in general. So I'm going to go ahead and in the poll, let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. And while we're doing that, Nick Room, are you still with us, man? What's going on across the pond? What's up? Nah, he's working with Eli. Okay. We'll talk to him later. All right. Number one, should college athletes be able to earn money off their name, image, and likeness? Basically, do you agree with this ruling? Six, we say yes, absolutely. And two, we say no, it's going to mess up college sports. This is interesting because the tide has totally turned. I think I think public opinion was kind of like in the favor of, you know, college sports are, are, are kind of pure. We don't want to mess with that. And I think now people are like, nah, it's, let, let the kids have, you know, uh, have, the, have their meat. They're, they're earning it for sure. So that's interesting. Who wants to, anybody want to give an argument for why they don't think that this, this should, be, should be paid? They want to jump in there? Yeah. No, I no, tried okay. that before, mm. so I'm I'll stand by. As long as it's name, I said absolutely yes, but that's because as long as it's name, image, light, and likeness, then yes. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, go sign some autographs, get some free tattoos, whatever. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see where it bleeds into, right? I mean, that's kind of the. Do, the, do you think if people make themselves. money of you, you should be making money? I think so. Like my my data, we talked. I mean, when I saw the uh, social, uh, what's that movie? Social. Yes. dilemma i think it was what it was when i saw that i absolutely thought yeah i mean they're just taking my data my information and they're making money off of it i'd love i'd love to get a piece of that that's one of the things that andrew yang proposed in the uh presidential race that i agree with like yeah if somebody's going to use my data i should get a piece of that but mm-hmm. you know the, the 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 saying is this if anything is free then it's then you're the, then you're the product you know if you're using a product that's free then you are the product and you know that's just like buyer beware like you should just know that if you're gonna use facebook you know feel free to use it, but 
you're the product, you know, they're, they're using you for that. And, uh, but I, I do wish that we got paid a little bit for, for using that. I agree with you, Nick, on that for sure. Cause they, but because they are brand ambassadors, because that, that question that you're asking, you know, will they be ambassadors for like, like brands and stuff? They will. Well, they already are. <laughs> I mean, they should get paid for it. I mean, they're, they're wearing the Nike you like, uniform, you, like, uh, you know, Adidas right. shoes mm-hmm. and all that. I've got a friend who um, I think I've told you guys about him, J.D. Gravina. He's a head women's basketball coach at Western Illinois. And um, he literally cannot walk around campus with anything but Adidas clothing on. Can't walk around with anything else but Adidas clothing on. Mm. Now, he gets paid for it because yeah. he's the coach. But his players don't get you know paid. Like, you know, they, they've got to wear Adidas and they don't get paid for it. So they're all brand ambassadors, but they just haven't been paid for it. Uh, number two, were you surprised to see the NCAA president, Mark Emmert, publicly applaud the decision? I love the two of you put Mark Emmert. I put that just to see if somebody would choose that. Um, yeah, he totally had to, right? I mean, you can't, he has the NCAA, you can't come out at this point and say, no, that's wrong. I mean, you know, I just don't think you can do that. But that's the thing about the NCAA. Those guys are just slimy. They're just always on, on they just wait to see which way the wind blows. And then they, and then they go that direction. I hate that. I just feel like it's, you know, I feel so like what, it's pretty hypocritical. What's wrong with just, it's like, yeah, fantastic, cool. The kids are gonna get paid, but in my opinion, you know, not. I mean, yeah. he had to. It's like one of those positions where he has well, to come out did, and say he supports it. But did anybody read the court, the the the, the uh, okay. arguments in court that the NCAA made? Did you read that, Kyle? Yeah, the, like, he had to. There was no way he could. After what Kavanaugh said about how it's essentially any other business in America, if they did what the NCAA did, yeah. it would be criminal. It's like, right. of course, he had to and, say. It. And he said, you can't justify not paying your employees because your product is based on your employees not being paid. Like he said, you can't do that. You know, I thought that was really clever when he said that. Um, so yeah, they, they totally had to come out and do that. But again, I think the devil's in the details. Like how far does this stretch and where does the line really cross? Who's going to regulate this? You know, how many deals are going to be under the table now and hope they don't get caught or, you know, whatever. I mean, it'll be now. pretty... <laughs> The big yeah, sports they already are under the table. You're even having to <laughs> back, man, to get the good good players to come over. That's I mean, true. But now now to be a little more direct, now Adidas is gonna, you know, probably go, you know, send a check directly as opposed to going through some slimy assistant coach somewhere. I bet it's not gonna be Adidas. Like did Adidas I hear correctly too, the school. There's no penalty for transferring schools any longer as well. No, yeah, they, they the I think they get one I can they get one they get one free portal one. without right. without penalty. They can That's a big deal. Time. That's a big deal monetarily though. If you play at Troy University and Alabama wants you and you got sponsorship money on the line, you're going 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, people are finding quickly in the transfer portal that they don't have the market value they think they do. It's going to be right. okay for the first couple well, of years. They you do if Nike's paying you, though, and you have a Troy, yeah. Troy <laughs> University Nike, versus... Nike's not going to pay that. That's the thing. Like, it's not... There's so many student athletes. They pay for a lot of dumber stuff. But they're not going to pay... But the schools, they pay the schools. So, like, a Zion Williams two years ago was being, like, Nike wouldn't have paid him. They already got the school deal. He's not going to walk out in Adidas shoes. Like, that's where it's all kind of... It's you the top it's 0.5% are going to get paid. And then every defensive tackle you've never heard of is going to get 20 bucks for right. wearing let some me, sticker on their shirt. Well, I think that say, yeah. if they're smart, what they're doing is they are, these kids already understand the value of their personal brand because they, they know online. I mean, they know influencers. They see how it all works. These kids yeah. just to, get to finally do it, right? All yeah. their peers get to do it and there's no consequences. And these kids are millionaires, billionaires. They're making so much money. Now you get kids who already have kind of like, you can be a walk-on if you understand how to do a podcast, how to control your brand to do all that stuff. Now you get to actually monetize it, which is nice, which makes the most sense. I don't think it's going to be car dealerships like everyone thinks. It's going to be people just (laughs) owning their brand finally. So let me ask you this question. So with student athletes being able to make money now, like you're saying, like a podcast or something like that, do you think that will actually encourage them? to stick stuff for someone to stick around longer. Cause I think, you know, a lot of them will play for one year and obviously the top prospects will go. Those they are still going to go, <clears throat> but there were other guys that had to make that decision. Like, well, let me go in the draft and maybe if I get picked, I can make money or let me stay here. But now if they can make money in college, maybe there's not as much pressure and you might actually see college sports have juniors and seniors on the floor again. Yeah, no, that possibly you got to hope that happens. I, I would personally cool. like that because I miss that. That's the one thing I miss about college athletics was when you had a Christian later for four years, you know, when you had Stacey Ogman for four years and you had and you had these players, and you got to know them and you got to see them as a team come together and come back and, re, you know, defend and repeat. Like you don't see that anymore. People aren't repeating because, you know, they're different players every year on those top schools. You know, and I just think it'd be great to see I'd be great to see players stick around longer. And this might actually be something that would cost some of them if they're teetering between going pro or staying and actually stay because they can 
develop their skills, still make a little coin, you know, and, and, you know, improve their, their draft status moving forward and not feel like they're dying. So I think, I think, uh, I'm, I'll tell you what, these, <laughs> the education the kids are getting are probably not, probably not that great. I'm, there's a lot of tutors that are writing a lot of papers for a lot of basketball players. Let me just tell you but that. This is, um, I feel like them getting paid is a better education than the Roxford jocks they were taking because they're learning how to be an entrepreneur. They're learning how to kind right. of start doing that type of stuff that they weren't able to do right. before because you couldn't really That's take That's a much their- better education than what they're going to get right. in their economics it's class. A good one sure. that so much fun. of the education is not just what they're learning in the classroom. I, I, I think college is huge for just learning how to be an adult. Mm-hmm. I mean, so yeah. to, to Kyle's point, if you're throwing out, you know, now you've got to manage your time and your schedule and, Hey, now you have to manage some of the money coming in. I mean, that yeah. Shaq Maybe said it best when he was he was deciding <laughs> if he was going to be going to the pros or not. His mom gave him a checkbook and said, "Balance this," and he couldn't, so he stuck around for for college for another year. <laughs> oh, that's 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 an old wives' tale. That's not true. That didn't happen. <laughs> hey, I've got I've got no reason not to believe Shaq. <laughs> oh, that, that, that guy's one of the best marketers in the world, man. That guy's gonna tell you a good story every any time. That's for sure. He's he's Magic Johnson on steroids, so. You know, that's what I got. Yeah, his commercials are hilarious. I love them. his commercials are good. All right, question three: How will this impact college athletics? Uh, why do you say no, no impact? Uh, I don't agree with that. Um, six of you say corporations will become further embedding college athletics. I think they're going to try because they're just going to continue to push their brand a little bit. If they can sweeten the yep. pot with the players a little bit, I mean, why not? I mean, it's just uh, that's that's it. Everybody wants to be like the people they see on TV, so why wouldn't they? And then uh, three of you said other. So, what other ways do you think this can impact college athletics besides some of the things we already talked about? I think what Tyler was saying about the transfer portal, the idea that you kind of are putting a bunch of things together at once. It, it'll be interesting how it plays out. I think it's going to be crazy when the first first athlete goes the wrong way and how the courts play it out, because that's how it's all. They don't really have good guidelines. So it's what's going to happen with the courts. How's it going to freak out? How's all this stuff going to happen? Which is kind of a little BS that you're doing this to like college kids who are like already have a ton of stuff they're trying to learn. Yeah, that's true. What that's happens true, with a college kid when he has half a million dollars in his pocket? <laughs> Same thing. That just, happens he goes out and buys a Lamborghini or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's rolling around campus. Uh, yeah, he's going to have to get security detail, and things going to things going to change. That's for sure. Can you imagine that. college. Can you imagine a nineteen year old kid walking across, you know, the University of Texas with a bank account that's got a million bucks in it. I'm kind of yeah. with you guys. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a ton of money. I think they still got all the leverage because they've been used to getting zero. So <laughs> 50 bucks a week for meals is going to sound like a lot to a college athlete. Trey, if you, if they gave you a hundred bucks a week, when you were a walk on, you'd have taken it in a heartbeat. Uh, well, of course I would have, uh, I would have been, I would have definitely taken that. I would have taken anything they would have given me. I would have taken you know, like another free pair of shoes. I mean, I, it wouldn't matter at all. So um, but we'll see. But, you know, if, but if they do start making a lot of money, it's, things are going to change. We'll see what happens. Yep. But, it, well, and I, but I think one of the things that I was the one that said, no, I said no impact and other because you had multiple options. But I think one of the things is going to be no impact, depending on how you look at college athletics. If you're talking about on the field, I don't see anybody, you know, slowing down on the field because they have a couple extra bucks in their pocket. I mean, you're the, the Reggie Bush thing came up. He didn't not play hard because he had, you know, somebody giving him some well, money. On the side. It was, he, could, he couldn't let on to anything going on. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. But the thing is, I mean, I, I think you're still going to see like the product on the field is going to be fine. You're going to see, you know, situations where, yeah, maybe the, the power five get heavier on the, the talent pool because they're going to have bigger, you yeah. know, recruiting well, tools and- there. But we know that. I think when you talk about yeah. the kids actually playing the sports, it's still going to be the same. Yeah. Well, yeah, think about recruiting. this, building a brand. If you, if, you, if you have money now, building a brand with a podcast or whatever it is, you might take more risk to put your body on the line in football. Right now, a lot of guys don't play in the bowl games because they don't get hurt for the draft. But if you're already making some nice, nice coin, you figured that out already, maybe take a few more risks. Maybe that makes the product better. Maybe people like stay longer and last longer. I, I tend to agree the product will get better. I don't think they're going to slow down, but I do wonder what money's going to do from the standpoint of coaching and receiving coaching. Like, are you going to listen to your coach who's, you know, yelling at you if you, you know, if you got a lot of money in the bank, you might be like, nah, I'm not up for this. You know, so you might transfer, you might quit. I don't know. I think see what happens. Re- recruiting. Is there going to be nine implications? <laughs> nah, that's no, well, I mean, I, I mean, they're gonna, I mean, equally men and women can make money. I think they have to figure out how they're going to brand themselves to make, to make the money. Right. Because if, uh, 
you know, starting quarterback at Oklahoma versus somebody on the women's swimming team at UT. Yeah. But at the same time, I think it's good. They're probably going to follow fair, you know, market value. I mean, if you're, you know, if you can market yourself, you know, whether you're a woman or a man and get paid for it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody on the men's swim team is <coughs> well, too many endorsements. That's what it is. It's <laughs> really by sport. It's not, it's not no, no, it's gender. It's like, gonna have there's all, I, Tyler, I think you're going to be surprised. There's already the, the most followed college athlete right now is an LSU women's gymnast. Yep. Like they've already reported like the ones that you actually that know how to do this are probably yeah, going to be all just a little the more skill of branding. That's yep. what it's going to be. That's it's going to be that thing. I think the recruiting yep. is going to be interesting too, because what happened, yep. what's stopping a booster from saying, Hey, you come to the school, I guarantee I'll give you a 30,000 a week to do like, you'll be my, on my car dealership commercial or something like that. That will be mm-hmm. where, cause I know you're still not allowed to talk to high school, but it's always been shady with that stuff. So what, what yeah. happens there? Yeah, they're they're going to find a way around that. But you're right. I mean, those kind of those kind of deals are going to happen. And again, like like you said, Tyler, if if the guy at Troy University can get the co- local car dealership to do that for a player, they might win over an athlete that they never would have gotten otherwise um, for those kind of things. So that's going to be really fascinating. So a lot of a lot of good discussion around this topic. I, I can't wait. Like I really can't wait to see how it how it plays out. Question four wouldn't on this one. Will college athletes eventually become brand ambassadors for certain brands like Nike? Does I'm talking like explicitly. And, you know, five, you say, yes, absolutely. Two, say so you won't get that far. One of you doesn't even care. It's probably Aaron. You probably don't care, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Called it. Yes. Fair. Um, yep. I totally think they're going to be brand ambassadors. Like, I could even see, like, uh, top college players and pros someday doing commercials together that could be fun or, you know, stuff like that. I, I could totally see that happening. Uh, it, may, it may take a while to kind of get to that place, but I could, I could see that happening. I, I can, too. Yeah, so we'll see what happens with that. How do they manage the whole school? Thing? How do they manage the school <clears throat> brand? Like, how do they manage all that stuff? How do you I have no idea. Or for Gatorade, if you go to Florida State, like Red Powerade, <clears throat> Gatorade's not there's allowed on be, our campus. There's going to be some new uh, positions on campus. So they got the AD, you've got the information director, you're going to have the, you know, the, the <laughs> NIL ambassador, the NIL uh, director. <laughs> uh, I did hear there director. were rules about, for example, WIU is an Adidas school, there were yeah. rules about what you could get endorsements for based on your, like the school takes priority over the individual. Right. But again, I, and I know we're talking about some of these big names, like, you know, Nike and <coughs> shoes apparel. I think you're going to see a lot of stuff that's going into the entertainment side of things where all of a sudden you can have somebody go, I, I mean, going back to when I was in college, we would play NC2A football and they had all the numbers under the people, but it was like, oh, we know who that is. I mean, you're going to see a Madden right. version of, of NC2A, you know, things like oh, that. Yeah. Oh, they'll definitely pay the money because they'll get more kids to play it. They'll, they'll, they'll earn it back. They're definitely going to come up with a system to pay the players a little bit and put their names on because it's more real. Yeah. So I'm totally going to do that for sure. Justin Shepard, what's up, brother? I feel like I haven't seen you in like two months. It's, it's been a long time. I keep having <clears> – <throat> My jerk clients want to have meetings on Fridays and stuff. I'm like, look, I don't need money. I need to be on word on the street. That's right. Tell them what's going on. You know, get those right. meetings out of the way before Friday. Friday should be like, you know, the, the day that you hit it hard, take a nice Seriously. hour lunch for this, and then it's, you know, take the afternoon off to go play golf, something like that. That's how Friday should be, you know. Are so, you back home or are you still on the road? Oh, no, 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 no. We're, we're, we're right in the middle. We're in week four of seven weeks, man. Sweet. So we're in New York. We're in the Big Apple. We're just across in New Jersey, actually, at an RV park that's literally right there. So we can see this is the, this picture behind me is actually the view about five blocks from where I'm sitting right now. Um, nice. So it's really a really great spot. And in fact, we're going to go ahead and end the day with this week in pictures because it's been two weeks since I've seen you guys. A lot has happened in two weeks. First of all, if you haven't been following my blog, be sure to do that. It's TreyGriggs.com. You can subscribe and get in your inbox and see every day what we're doing because I'm writing a blog every day on what we're doing. So it's a lot of fun, but I'm also going to share with you guys some pictures from what's been happening in my life, but also in the world. So here we go this week in pictures. First of all, uh, I had a chance to go to Mount Vernon, uh, Washington, DC at home. This is the back porch of George Washington's home. How legit is that? Like this thing is incredible. I'll show you a couple other pictures here so you can kind of see. This is the view of the house. So that's the back porch we're sitting on right there. Beautiful estate there. Nice I'm seeing like half wait, of your cat. We, is everybody stuck yeah, on the same picture here? Yeah, we see your hat. See a hat. I thought it was oh, look at that, Greg. Just me, but okay. all I see is a hat. It's a good hat. That's ridiculous. That's... All right. Well, let's <laughs> let's try this again, everybody. Man, amateur hour here. Amateur hour. <laughs> well, we, he's rusty. We, he's that, rusty. That's 
that's without saying uh that goes without saying it's amateur hour that's always been amateur hour oh that's the wrong thing i don't want to share that with you okay let's go on. uh <laughs> prison that's, guard acu- accused that's, of what that's later on that's later on it's it's shut up you're stealing my thunder Working here we go on it. okay right, are, you guys, are you guys are you guys seeing the back of the house now are they mm-hmm. repainting yeah. it they're actually reciting it so the way that the, the way that uh, washington built this house was that he used wood that looks like stone right he actually used wood planks that's beveled around the edges and then they had this process where they would paint it multiple times. And on the last painting, they would throw sand up on it and give it the texture. And then it looks like stone. And his entire house is like mm. that. But as you can um, imagine, every 40 or 50 years or so, <clears throat> you got to redo it. So that's what they were doing when we were there is they were re- redoing the, uh, uh, the siding. So that's the view of the back. This is the view from the porch. It's absolutely incredible. That's the Potomac, beautiful river. There's several of the pictures, but I didn't want to put too many on here, but absolutely incredible. Then we got to go to um, Arlington. This was at the end of our, our time. This is actually um, after Word on the Street two weeks ago. We went to Arlington National Cemetery, got to watch mm-hmm. uh, the change in the guard of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, which was awesome. Oh, the pictures are not in order, so I apologize. This is back to, Jeff- or to Washington's home. This is the front uh, of his estate there. Um, these are not in order at all, so I apologize. We're just going to scramble all over. Total mm-hmm. amateur. Aaron, shut up. Here we go. This That's is bringing a, back okay. good memories. I was there 20 years ago with my family. So it's good, good stuff here. <laughs> That's awesome. So this is, um, let me, let me share the sound. Cause this is a, uh, a gift that my, my daughter bought. Um, it's, it's one of the coolest gifts I have. Oh, this is her right here. Oh, you can't see it. You can see it. So there, there she is. Get in there. There's Naomi. There she is. So um, she bought this gift right here. Like this is one of the best souvenirs ever. It's this thing that flies. Uh, and, uh, uh, it goes up to 50 yards. In one case, she actually got to go straight and uh, quite a way. So a uh, really cool gift there. Uh, pretty exciting. I thought I'd share that with you guys. Okay, here we go. Changing the guard. Did it change pictures? Are you seeing the change in the guard yep. now? Yep. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Love that. Had a great time there. Got to go uh, you know, to the Capitol building. Didn't go to go in the Capitol building. Everything is still locked down. And they say it's because of COVID. But if you go to the next building over, like the National Archives, you can go right in. Like, it's really, really uh, frustrating what's going on with DC. Then I got to play golf. Uh, I got a man, these pictures are so out of order. There's the White House. So look at the White House. Everybody's in front of the White House, no mask or anything, but you can't go in the White House because COVID is all up in there. So they got that all shut down. Uh, we got to uh, Father's Day was beautiful. We got to have a, 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 a sunrise breakfast on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. You guys may have seen that on LinkedIn, which is amazing. We got the place all to ourselves, um, so it's absolutely beautiful. Got to stand right at the spot where Martin Luther King gave his "I Have a Dream" speech, which is one of my favorite <clears throat> speeches of all time. So it was pretty cool to get to see that. So that's the, they got a little um, a stone that's a little different than all the others with this engraved on the ground. So this is actually on the ground. You can stand right on it. We took our dog Tiger. He actually jumped up here on his own, as if to say, "Take a picture of me here." And so we did. Uh, so there's Tiger there. Another picture of me playing golf. Beautiful. There's the sunrise breakfast. Um, uh, the, the Lincoln Memorial, looking at the Washington Monument, very, very cool uh, to get to uh, to be out there. And literally, I don't know if you guys have done this or not before, but but typically the the early morning people, the Johns of the world, get out there and they do their running early in the morning. <laughs> and there were a lot of people there um, on the steps watching the sunrise. But then after the sun got a little higher in the sky, they all continued their runs or their their uh, their bike rides or whatever they were doing. And so that's how I was able to get those pictures where it looked like we had rented the place out, like we had it all to ourselves, which was which cool. was pretty amazing. There's another picture. There's the golf swing. Beautiful. Um, got to see the uh, MLK <laughs> um, monument, which is awesome. Back here, I don't know if you can see this or not, but back here they have all of his famous, like several famous quotes of his. So very cool memorial if you haven't been there. Um, awesome to see that one. And this is on the way home that day. Again, these are not in sequential order. I, I, I really messed up today. But my daughter Hannah was uh, was was uh, being a pillow for, for Naomi and for Tiger as well. Tiger was completely exhausted. Tiger walked six miles a day, longest walk he's ever had. Uh, dude was just walking with his tongue hanging out of his mouth the whole time. Felt bad for the guy. Um, we got to go into the archives, which was great. So I got to see the Constitution, the Declaration, the Bill of Rights. Uh, so I was grateful for the girls to get to see that. So Hannah and I went in together, and then my wife and, and uh, Naomi went in together. This is from the steps of the Jefferson Memorial. You can actually see Washington Monument in the background. The way that they've, they've kind of constructed everything, they really thought through to create these really cool pictures. If you've never been there, you'll see some of them, but they've, they've done a good job with that. So that's pretty cool. And this is uh, the uh, Jefferson Memorial from across the, the pond. This is at the FDR uh, Memorial, which again was probably one of my favorite memorials. It's walking past the fountains and some of his famous quotes and uh, his four terms and, and things like that. So pretty neat there 
this one and MLK are hidden. They're really on the west side of that pond and they're off the main drag. Most people don't find these. Like there was nobody there at these monuments because they just they're just not too common. Even though they're on the map, people just stop and don't get over there. So really cool. Are these on the little see, island? Uh, um, they're not on an island. There's no there's uh oh I mean this is just a pond. They just jumped around on these little rocks. But no, this is just all this is just west of that that lake where the Jefferson Memorial is. Um so the really Potomac? really cool to see if you get there. It's, it's cool. in between the Potomac and the uh the reflecting pool by the uh by the, the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah. So very, very cool. Just kind of totally hidden. That's I just love this picture. I thought that was a fun picture. In this picture, you can see the Capitol building in the back, very faint. So pretty cool picture there. Um That's my a daughter wanted to hold picture. Yeah, I like that one. My daughter wanted to hold Thomas Jefferson, so we tried to figure that out. So she got that. It's pretty pretty fun. Um, making that all work. And then another picture of us in front of the Lincoln Memorial with the whole family. Again with Tiger. This was both this is before the walking began. He was he was doing just fine. And then he had no idea what was coming. All right. A couple more pictures here. So uh, we, we got to go see the Washington Monument. This is a picture of my girls actually being nice to each other. So I had to capture that moment uh, on, on uh, camera so we could hold on to that one. This is what uh, this is what laundry looks like in an RV. You throw all the clothes on the bed and then my dog jumped right in the middle. This is literally how we do laundry on the road. So uh, I thought that was kind of a funny picture to capture that. This is us yesterday in New York City. We made the rookie mistake of only taking one small umbrella. Uh, instead of larger umbrellas and it started raining and so literally we're just trying to stay dry for a minute uh, at a red light and it just looked really funny so I figured we, we should keep, capture a picture of this uh, the only thing staying dry in this picture is my head uh, the rest of my body is totally getting drenched uh, by rain unfortunately uh, we have to go to the uh, American History Museum they had some great displays of transportation so I saw the Werner truck I thought that was pretty cool for our industry this is the RV park we're at today. So this is in New Jersey City. That's one of the high sky rise buildings right there. And then over to the right is uh, New York City. Uh, so that's our, our park for today. Okay, backing up. This is in Philadelphia at the Constitution Center. If you've never been to the Constitution Center, you should definitely make plans to go. This theater is really cool because all of like the floor is actually the screen. They shoot everything down on the floor uh, through projectors. And there's actually a live presenter. I could not take pictures or video during the presentation, but I wanted to capture this just to explain it. But literally one of the best presentations I've ever seen, it's called Freedom Rising. Um, and it's in the Constitution Center. And it's really incredible about the story of America and, uh, and all that happened there starting in Philadelphia. So that was really cool. Um, this is us going for a bike ride back in Washington. These are so out of order. I can't believe it. Uh, this is uh, the girl standing next to a dinosaur bone. They wanted to compare themselves. And my daughter handed or an elephant, sorry, an elephant leg, not a dinosaur bone. Thank you. They're right here. Help me out. An elephant leg. So it's pretty impressive to see how they compared. This is us in uh, uh, Hershey, PA at the Hershey Story Museum. Although we didn't stay here because this one costs money. We went to the free one, but we took a picture before we knew that. So what are you going to do? We, uh, we ate uh, lunch at the food carts in Washington, D.C. If you've never done that, really, really good. We went to Rooster Subs here. Very, very good. I enjoyed that quite a bit. But there's about uh, 15 of these that line up. Cool. And they're all over the city. There's probably 50 or so that we saw. And uh, they're there all day. So really, really great place there. Um, my wife and I went on a walk the other day. So this is the view about five blocks from where we are of uh, you know Wall Street, Lower Manhattan area with the Freedom <laughs> Tower there. Um, so that was, a, that was a lot of fun. This is my daughter and I having shakes. So when I went to Hershey, my daughters were like buying, like my, she bought like this sweatshirt that uh, says Hershey's Kisses on it. Um, and they were buying chocolate, and all that kind of stuff. I bought the best thing, which is a chocolate shake set. So we now have Hershey's glasses for chocolate shakes. It came with Hershey's syrup and a scoop and straws and all that. So my gift is the gift that's going to keep on giving. And when we get home, very excited about that. So we enjoyed that. Again, more, more laundry in the, in the RV. Sorry, these are so out of whack. This is just embarrassing. I'm embarrassed today, but you know, got... <laughs> we lost Trey. Yep. Of course, chocolate. Yep. Uh, everywhere you look. Really cool. This is the African American Museum in Washington, D.C. Um, so we got to go there. We spent two, and a half, two hours in there, and I could probably could have spent another five hours in there. It was so good, so compelling, really great exhibits. Um, just outlined a lot of things that have gone on the history of our country. And when you look at it in one scope like that, um, you really start to capture um, the challenge that African-Americans have had in our country. You know, at every turn, um, you know, it's been a challenge. I mean, even when we got their freedom, imagine this, imagine being a freed slave, but you have no money and nobody will hire you. What do you do now? Because now you don't even have a place to live. 
like the challenges could just continue to continue. It was very interesting, very fascinating to, to see that. But it was uh, also, we got to see some cool stuff like Michael Jordan shoes, which will come up here in a minute. This is the original Smithsonian building. Uh, so we, we enjoyed that. This is one of the first RVs in the 1950s. And I, I, I said to my daughters, can you imagine going on a seven week trip in that? And they're like, no. And we might not be much of a family if we did that. But uh, people back in the 60s would actually buy these and just park them and live in them when housing was getting to be too affordable at times in the 50s and 60s. So pretty fascinating to learn the story of, of uh, RVs and how they came to be just basically small houses. And now we're back to tiny houses. People are now building those because they want to. So pretty fascinating on that. Again, this is us in front of the Constitution Center. This is me with my buddy, Donnie. Let me tell you about this guy. So this is us playing golf the other day. This guy here, Donnie Boyer, actually trained me in sales. My first job, door-to-door -door office supply sales. This is the guy that actually trained me out in the field. Um, he now has an office here in Jersey doing sales. And so we got a chance to go and uh, play golf. We were actually out in Portland, Oregon together doing door-to-door -door office supply sales. And I got to have, uh, play golf with him recently. It was a blast. I hadn't seen the guy in 10 years. So really enjoyed that. That was pretty cool. And the golf course was, was just a beautiful course. This is inside of the legislative area of uh, Independence Hall. This is where they debated the uh, if they're going to declare independence and uh, the new constitution um, and many of the other work they did, including the Bill of Rights, all happened in this room here. This guy here was phenomenal on fire. Like this guy just told the story great, was interactive with the kids. I love watching people doing something that they really enjoy. And this guy really, really enjoyed uh, what he was doing. It was awesome to see. All right, a few more pictures of us playing some Monopoly in the RV. Um, Naomi won again. She wins a lot of games. None of us like it. She wins quite a bit. Uh, these are Jordan's first shoes and Run DMC's Adidas, which I thought was pretty fun in the African American Museum, so I had to capture a picture of that. This is us in front of Independence Hall. This is the, uh, the 1962 Olympics, maybe? 68? 68 Olympics? 68. 68, that's right, 1968 Olympics, when uh, two U.S. athletes uh, raised their fist uh, during the anthem and created quite a stir, quite a havoc with that. Uh, it was interesting to see some more of that. This is the Congress room, the first uh, Congress room in uh, just next to Independence Hall, the Congress building. This is where the first House of Representatives met um, to do the business of the, uh, the country uh, at the very beginning when Philadelphia was the capital. And right above it, above these windows over here, right above on the floor over there is the Senate room uh, where the Senate met. And this is also where uh, George Washington and John Adams were sworn in as president for his second term. And John Adams' first term was right there on that, that podium there in the Congress building. Uh, these are some of the uh, forts that were built or some of the cabins that were built at Valley Forge. Uh, not If you've never been there, definitely worth the trip. Uh, 10,000 soldiers built 2,000 of these cabins in a month at Valley Forge, um, having to go and harvest the logs and uh, work. And one of the generals, uh, one of the French generals that was helping out showed up and said, it just looked like a bunch of beavers going to work. Like it was just amazing to see them dragging and, you know, building these cabins. Can you imagine building 2000 of these cabins in a month? Um, really, really fascinating and interesting and uh, would have loved to have seen that. Pretty amazing. This is uh, George Washington's uh, home in Valley Forge. This is where he uh, worked out of uh, his headquarters while he was there, a home that he rented during the time of being at Valley Forge. This is the original Smithsonian. And I, I just love this picture because it had the castle features up top and these doors are absolutely incredible. I got a picture of, uh, I got a picture of these doors somewhere in here, but uh, it was supposed to be the next slide, but of course it's not. So we're going back to DC. This is our campsite in DC. Pretty fun here. We got the, the fencing up for Tiger and all that, just to give you guys a little intro into how we're living on the road. Uh, these are the guys I played golf with. Will was also in the field. Uh, Tim's a new guy. didn't know him, but Will and Donnie were in the field with me in Portland, my first job. So really cool to play golf with them and, uh, and have a good time. So we had a lot of fun with that. And of course, I'm the shortest guy again, as always. That's pretty much the way, unless, unless I'm with Robert Bain, that's pretty much how it looks in pictures. <laughs> we're the same height. They're like, no, Will's shorter. No, 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 we're the same height. Okay, this is uh, Independence Hall. Just took a couple pictures here of that. This is inside of Hershey. I wanted to capture the chaos that was in there. This doesn't even really do a good job, but there were people everywhere. I mean, you can kind of see back here. I mean, just people everywhere back there. The lines were so long. It was nuts. Um, this is uh, my first trip to Duck Donuts on the road. Never been to Duck Donuts before. The first time I had a donut made uh, for me on, on the spot. I thought that was really fun and cool. So I took a picture of that. 
This is uh, what this is how they packed slaves into ships on the transatlantic slave, which I thought was unbelievable. They literally would put them in these very small areas and may, you know force them to lay down for the entire trip. Many of them did not make it. Many of them died along the way. Unbelievable to actually see that. Um, I took a picture of that. This is a really cool room at the Constitution Center. These are life-size replica bronze statues of all 55 that were there uh, to debate the Declaration of Independence. And they had little plaques on the floor so that you could see, um, or was the Constitution or Declaration? I can't remember. It was Constitution. Maybe there's a Constitution people there. But it was really cool to see these, like the life size, how big you know some of the people were, how short many of them were. I mean, like John Adams is like 5'4", super short. Uh, Alexander Hamilton was pretty short as well. So that was pretty cool to see. In Philadelphia, we had to go get a Philly cheesesteak. If you're going to do that, this is the place to go. Pat's King of Steaks. Cash only, by the way. Uh, learned that the hard way. Cash only. But uh, really good uh, cheesesteaks there. The, the plain cheesesteak is the best one. So that's what we got. Uh, the locals were telling us about that. And the cheese fries are really good as well. So if you haven't been there before, make sure you stop there. If you've yep, been like there, awesome they're great. Yeah, <laughs> So good, John. So good. Uh, this is, again, in the, the Constitution uh, or the, uh, the Legislative Hall of Independence Center there. Um, pretty neat to see how they had it set up. They had it set up with the exact same number of chairs as they would have had at that time. So you can almost see how they you know, would have fit into that room and, and their seating arrangement, things like that. So pretty cool. I know we're totally running over tonight's show. Blah, 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 more of those. We'll just keep going here. I want to get to the end, which are really good. This is the National Cathedral. That was cool. Got to see that. Uh, Independence Hall again. Uh, these are the, if you guys remember the movie uh, National Treasure? Yep. So we got to see that. And actually, National Treasure was filmed in Philadelphia on, on location. Much of it was filmed there. So it was pretty cool to see that. Or part of it, I should say. A couple more pictures of fam. This is my daughter meeting Alexander Hamilton, her favorite. So she wanted to get a picture with him, which was pretty cool. Didn't see that. These are those doors on the, uh, the Smithsonian uh, Castle that I showed you earlier. This is a replica of what the ship would look like, just to give you guys a perspective of the Atlantic slave trade. I mean, I just, I still can't even fathom. I can't fathom treating people that way. And I can't fathom being one of those persons that had to ride over like that. Just absolutely mind boggling. All right. One more of Naomi with the uh, elephant leg. There's the elephant. There's a cool picture from inside of the African American Museum of this. So as I said, I think they've done a lot of things on purpose to make these views possible. Really, really cool to see that. This is the Hope Diamond. Got to see that. The girls love that. It's pretty cool to see that. This is in uh, F.A.O. Schwartz here in New York. We yep. did this yesterday. You can see the, the piano. I didn't get to play it. Uh, the girls did that, but uh, there were people on there. We didn't have time, but um, uh, enjoyed that from the movie Big from Tom Hanks, of course. All right. So on to some news. So Bill Cosby was released from prison or he's going to be released from prison this week as they overturn their uh, um, uh, his uh, uh, conviction. conviction. Thank you. Um, and so that's really interesting. And we'll see what happens moving forward. With some of the others that were in there in that case, they asked what's going to happen to Harvey Weinstein. I don't know, uh, but very, very interesting. I wonder if he's going to get Did you see the arguments, though, as the, you know, the, the, the pudding pops guy. Uh, no, Juan, I have not. Mm -mm. That's just crazy. Like what the lawyers came up with and the reason they let him go is he's just nuts. I haven't seen that, but I've heard well, that some people are pretty upset about it. I don't know. We'll to it doesn't up. mean he's not They're, guilty. He's guilty as hell. It's just they just got yeah, him off on a technicality. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, 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 uh, that's interesting. What I read on, on the reason is like because of the testimonies of people that suffered, were victims, but were victims 10 years ago. And their um, their stories told to the jury influenced in the in the decision. That sounds mm -hmm. like a load of BS, but it's a technicism, I guess. That's interesting. Yeah, we'll see what this means moving forward for others. Um, but yeah, I saw that. But you know, like you said, John, he's he's already guilty in the you know, court of public opinion. It's probably going to be. I don't know what it's going to be like for him on the outside. I don't know what it's like for him on the inside, but we'll, we'll have to see, wait and see. So yeah. that was interesting this week. Uh, next, we had the, the collapsing of the building in Florida, unfortunately. The, the 20 people have confirmed dead and many, um, many not, uh, uh, not found yet, and they're still searching. So really sad to hear that. Uh, it's amazing to see this in America. We just don't see it too much. In fact, a lot of the people, you know, kind of saw and heard that, that things weren't right. Like they were seeing, you know, some things fall, like pieces of the building fall, but they literally like, it's not going to collapse. I and mean, it's America. It's not going to happen. And so they didn't leave. And so really sad to hear those types of reports, but, uh, but that's going on in Florida down there. Um, hopefully nobody knows anybody who's having to deal with that. 
And then uh, this was really cool. Some girls, so some sisters created a lemonade stand to raise money for their baby sister. I thought that was really neat and uh, a good story. Um, so that's pretty cool. I just love throwing some of these feel good stories in there. Um, they said that they, that was the only thing that they really knew how to make money. So they decided to do it. And so of course they, they uh, had a lemonade stand. I did not get to hear how much money they made, but I bet they made more than most kids did on lemonade stand. And uh, hopefully we're able to raise quite a few funds for their sister, which is pretty cool. Um, as we talked about earlier, Reggie Bush wants his tro Heisman Trophy back. We'll see if he gets it. <laughs> I think that he probably should get it back, but we'll see what happens with that. Um, and then, of course, we talked about college athletes making money, so that's exciting. And then we're going to end on this one today. Uh, prison guard got caught smuggling drugs in through Rice Krispie Treats. So the next time that you're at a party and somebody offers you a Rice Krispie treat, you may want to think twice. You never beware. know how to be in that thing. So <laughs> beware. Buyer, beware. That's for sure. All right, everybody. Well, hey, listen, we went over today. Apologies for that. Thanks for sticking around. Always good to see you guys. And uh, thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next week on Word on the Street, powered by Lean Solutions Group. You guys have a good week. You too. Safe travels. Yeah. Good, good holidays. Good holidays.